The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, beginning today in verse 14. Hello again, everyone. My name is Michael Moret, and the name of this program is Scripture Verse by Verse. For over 35 years, I've been teaching the Bible here on Scripture Verse by Verse, from Genesis through Revelation. And I have saved my work, so there are four complete series going through the entire Bible, verse by verse. All of it is archived at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at the Bible verse by verse dot com. So you can go there, choose, click, and listen. Study the whole Bible or any part of the Bible at your pace at your convenience. Again, that's at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Proverbs 24, verse 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. It pays to live the right way. It pays to read the word and study the word to find out what is true and what is false, what is right and wrong, and then live the right way. You know, God wants us to enjoy the good things which he has created. But he also doesn't want us to overlook the most important thing. It's important to be balanced in your life. Let your body be happy. Let it enjoy good things in moderation. But don't neglect the needs of your soul, which is what most people in the world do. They focus on what their body wants and they neglect the needs of their soul. Our soul needs the Lord God more than anything. So feed your body good food and feed your soul the word of God. Feed your soul the things that will draw you closer to God. 15. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. So God is warning bad people that they better not attack and take advantage of good people. And verse 16 tells us why. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. When a bad person hurts good person, they are, in reality, attacking God. God may allow a good person to suffer, but he will give him grace to handle it, and he will also use the bad to make the good person even better. Meanwhile, the one who did the bad will pay for the bad. See, you can't win if you rebel against God. But if you walk with God, you can't lose. 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. If someone hurts you, and God punishes them as a result, don't rejoice in their suffering. Don't taunt anyone who is suffering for any reason. It's good to acknowledge the justice of God, when he is punishing the wicked, but don't rejoice in the punishment of the wicked. 
rejoicing in their suffering, even if they've got it coming, is displeasing to God because the Bible says God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious of the wicked, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Don't be envious of the wicked or fret because bad people seem to have it made. Just remember what is going to happen to those people in the end. In the end, they're going to die. In the end, they will be punished. In the end, they will be in the flames of hell. And no one will envy them anymore. So you might as well stop envying them right now. Think about serving God and avoiding evil. Think about eternity. Don't think about the bad people whose good times are going to come to a screeching halt very quickly. Besides, if their lives are so great, why do they have to keep sinning? Do you ever think about that? If the life of an evil man, if his life is so great, why does he have to keep sinning? Why aren't they satisfied with things as they are? Why do they have to go deeper and deeper into sin if that life satisfies so much? And they do go deeper and deeper because they need a stronger buzz. And I'm not just talking about drugs. I'm talking about sin in general. Why do they have to do that? Well, I guess the last sin they committed didn't satisfy or they wouldn't be doing it again. 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? A parent who does not lead their child correctly is rebelling against God and will answer to God for the damage that they caused in their child? You better take parenting seriously. It's an extremely important job. And God will hold every parent accountable for how they raise their child if they raised them in the fear and knowledge of the Lord, if they punished them when they rebelled. Because if you don't, you will answer to God for that. All people who rebel against God and other legitimate authorities in their life will answer to him for it. All people. No matter what their position is. God is God he is a God of order. And he does not tolerate rebellion at any level. It's all wrong. And all rebellion is rebellion against him. So when your children willfully rebel against your authority, they are willfully rebelling against God. And that's why they should not be allowed to get away with it. And you, as a parent, represent God in the home. And you need to teach God's righteous standards. Because if you don't, you're going to answer to God for that. 23. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. But to those who rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Right and wrong really are not complicated. It's not that hard. 
to discern between right and wrong. The Ten, the Ten Commandments, along with the other laws of God, moral laws of God, the do unto others as you would have them to do unto you, those are good summaries of right and wrong. They're not complicated. They're very easy to understand. The hard part is finding someone who has the moral courage to speak the truth and live it. That's the problem. 24. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. But to those who rebuke him shall be delight and a good blessing shall come upon them. Doesn't take a genius to discern truth. But it does take a person of strong moral and spiritual convictions to reward right and punish wrong. It is a terrible thing when someone in charge blurs the moral distinctions between right and wrong by overlooking the bad things that people do. Many innocent people suffer when there is a cowardly person in charge, a cowardly person who doesn't put the blame where it belongs. For example, preachers who don't have the... And the only reason I use this as an example is because I have witnessed it. So I've been a Christian for 41 years. And for many of those years, I went to modern evangelical churches until I wised up and I realized this stuff is not of God. This, this lukewarm never call sin, sin. Never call out a sinner. Never talk about hell. Never even mention the word devil because all these things are uncool. And certainly never speak of repentance. None of this stuff is biblical. Many of those churches, you could go, you, you could hear the same sermon at a noon optimi optimist meeting in your city. Really no difference. It might sprinkle a little, couple of little Bible verses on it to make it more flavor, flavorable for the, uh, for the modern evangelicals in the audience. But I will tell you, preachers who don't have the guts to speak the plain truth of God's word because they are afraid of offending people who don't love Jesus anyway. You know what those preachers do? Those sickening, sweet, lukewarm, useless pieces of human trash posing as preachers and men of God? Don't, don't even go there because they're not. If they don't have the guts to proclaim the pure word of God without watering it down, if, if they're just so terrified of offending the people in the audience, especially the ones who have money, you know, but the people in general, they want to be thought of as being cool. They are not men of God. They are false shepherds. And I'll tell you what they do by doing that. People, by pleasing people, catering to the lukewarm who don't love Jesus anyway and are scared to death and abhor the word of God when it's given out straight, by catering to those people, they rob good people who do love Jesus and do love the word of God and want to know when they're doing something wrong so that they can repent because they love Jesus enough to repent. You are robbing those people of a good, solid spiritual feeding which they long for. When you cater to the wicked, you rob the righteous. And it's just not right. And they should be ashamed of themselves. And you got scrambled eggs for brains if you go to a church like that and support somebody like that. They don't deserve your support. They don't deserve your presence at that so-called church service. Well, I'm going to stop right there. You can study all of the Bible with me verse by verse, as I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast. 
all the way through Genesis through Revelation for a complete series at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry that has never, and I said never, watered down the Word of God, but I've always taught it from start to finish in a straightforward manner, not adding to it, not taking away from it. If you want to be a part of this proven ministry that has been faithful to God's Word, you can be by praying for me and God's Word because that will make you a part of this ministry. You can also go to the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and click the donate button and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also will make you a part of this ministry. Let's get out God's word together. Let's do it the way God wants it to be done. The whole counsel of God without watering it down. God deserves that. Until next time. So long, everyone.